you very much. Fellow Toastmasters, fellow orators. <laughs> About one year ago, I decided to take the Greyhound bus from Redding, California to Sacramento. My son had borrowed my car for an extended period of time. And when it was time for him to return it to me, I told him, don't worry about that. I'll come and get it. After all, Reading is only about two and a half hours away from Sacramento. I said that I would take a Greyhound bus. When I agreed to do this, I had in mind <laughs> riding the bus across the country many years ago. And I had in mind the emails that Greyhound was sending me constantly. And these emails would always depict the woman that was sitting by a wide window. She could see everything. Her, the bus was scrupulously clean. She was so relaxed and laid back in the seat. And I thought this trip would be a great time for me to de-stress and just reflect upon a number of matters that needed my attention. I could spend some time relaxing and thinking. Now, my husband and I had initially attempted to make this trip the day before we actually took it, but the bus driver who was ending his work day pulled up, left the bus running, got in his car and left. <laughs> one hour later, no one has shown up to take his place. Now, our departure was about 45 minutes overdue. After some effort, I was finally able to reach Greyhound on the phone and I was able to get to a live person. You know, that's a major feat today after a very concerted effort. And she told me that she didn't know if another driver would show up or not. It was suggested to me that I try to make my trip the following day. Now, as frustrated as that made me, I was serendipitous about the trip. After I waited for about another 45 minutes and no driver showed, finally I went home. Now, when I returned to what we can call a Greyhound station the next day, because it never opens, you just have to show up on the sidewalk to get the bus. The bus was running, it was cooling the interior, and it was filled with people when I boarded. And I noted that the passengers looked a little different. <laughs> but <laughs> that is actually the sign of these times. Now, by different, I mean, dirty, smelly, sickly, and unkempt. However, I pressed my way to the back of the bus to fortunately find two seats, one for myself, one for my husband. We were not able to sit together, but that was okay. It was not going to be too long of a ride, about two and a half hours. The bus took off, pulled off, and a woman sitting across from my husband began to blast this loud rap music that continuously used the N-word. Now, for those of you that don't know, the N stands for nigger. And I squirmed a little because I was not completely comfortable with hearing this word in a public environment. I know that it is quite prominently used in rap music, despite its societal history and its taboos. Now there was a young black male across from us about, he appeared to be about 25 to 30 years old, sitting just sort of in front of me and up above in another seat across the aisle. Now the woman was playing, that was playing this music, she was singing along loudly to it. <laughs> she looked like she might've been about 35 years old. No one said anything even though this word kept coming at us. So the woman turned around and she began to argue with another passenger on the bus. It appeared that they knew each other and they started throwing ice at each other in the bus, mind you. And they continued screaming profanities back and forth at each other as the music enhanced it and blared through the bus. 
Then the passenger who was playing the music so loudly with these words jumped up and decided she was going to lay in the middle of the floor. Now, do you know how narrow the walkway on a bus is? So she's stretched out prone in the middle of the floor and the bus is steadily traveling down the road. The aisles, like I said, are already very narrow. So my husband stood up and gingerly <laughs> made his way around her to go up front to talk to the driver because we're sitting in the back, mind you. Now, when he did so, the woman that was playing the offending music jumped up and jumped into his seat. Hmm. When he came back, he asked her to get up, get out of his seat. And I'm sitting there attempting to be calm, understanding that there's a lot of things being expressed on my face and everybody's watching and listening. <laughs> so I said to myself, I said, Lord, this bus is so narrow. If we have to physically fight in here, it will be so chaotic. So I decided to make a preemptive strike by going up front to ask the driver to let us out. He said he could not do that. I asked him to simply pull over to the side of the road and let us out on Highway 5. <laughs> he said he could not let us out in the middle of nowhere. Then I asked if he could do something about the woman that was arguing with my husband. He said he would have her removed as soon as we reached Red Bluff. Now, Red Bluff is 30 miles from Reddy. He said that the police would be waiting for her. I was so upset, I turned to the woman in a seat closer up front and I asked her if she would mind if I sat with her. And I left my husband to handle the woman in the back by himself because I didn't want to fight. So the fender continued her music. We continued our journey. My husband found another seat. Fellow Toastmasters, I want to share with you that this woman screamed, nigga, all the way from Red Bluff, Red, Red Ean to Red Bluff. That was her favorite word, loud as she could. She was screaming at the top of her voice for 30 straight miles. Now, I saw this young Black man that was sitting next to her trying to figure out how he was going to handle these insults. And I knew my response was important because he was watching me. And I also knew it was not worth getting into a physical altercation with this woman who obviously was mentally challenged. So I simply ignored her and looked straight ahead. I encouraged my husband to simply ignore her when I walked back to his seat to speak with him, and he did. The younger man did also, reading our faces, reading our body language, he did also, but he was visibly upset. After all, the N-word is supposed to be a call to arms for some Black people. Now, after we rid ourselves of the offending passenger in Red Bluff, I began to look around at the appearance of the other passengers. I believe that most of them were homeless. Later, my sister-in-law suggested they had probably sneaked into the bus when the driver was away and he did not challenge them for boarding passes or tickets when he returned. I guess he was probably used to it. She told me that I should have taken the train. She said <laughs> Amtrak has security and a completely different environment from Greyhound. Fellow Toastmasters, let me share with you. I made a trip from the Midwest, St. Louis, Missouri, to the state of California in 1978 via a Trailways bus. It was fun. We sung songs, we listened to music, we stopped to eat. There was a bathroom on the back of the bus. <laughs> they don't have that anymore these days. And I'm told that at one time, bus riding was so upscale that they actually had hostesses on the various different bus buses 
to attend to all of your personal needs. I know personally, like I said, there was a bathroom <laughs> coming all the way for two days. <laughs> I had to use it frequently. So my fellow passengers look nothing like the normal, clean, fresh looking models that Greyhound hired to portray <laughs> the average rider. The bus smelled horrible. I was afraid to inhale. People were unclean. They were sick. They were threatening in their appearance and they smelled just awful. Greyhound lied in their advertisement when they said that they cleaned the bus at every stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did not see that happen. I don't know what happened with the seat the woman vacated. She told my husband she urinated in that seat. That was why <laughs> she got out of it and didn't want to get back in. Oh and I forgot to mention that when he asked her to get out of the seat, she told him to sit in her seat. Much of our country, in terms of public service, has taken a turn for the worse. Younger people do not realize it was not always this way. We used to be at the top when it came to customer service. Now we're desperately trying to find room at the bottom. America was once a country that had high standards, period. Again, fellow Toastmasters, I say to you, it is not like it used to be. Mr. Toastmaster. 